Hi, Eason here, and welcome to Movie Friday, where I talk about movies that I recommend you watch for your Friday evenings, Saturday evenings, or just your weekend viewing experience in general. This week I'll be talking about one of the more talked about horror films of 2020. The said movie is the third directorial future length by director, writer, Lee Wan L. It is a movie that takes a premise that we are rather familiar with, but does something interesting with it and takes it to an entirely new and especially fucking creepy and harrowing direction. The said movie is The Invisible Man. Now apparently The Invisible Man was supposed to have been a part of the dark universe that Universal Studios was trying to build in response to the success of the MCU. But as the DC movies that came out later would attest, you don't always get to make your MCU cake and then eat it. The dark universe was supposed to bring in all the classic monsters that the studio was once known for, including the Invisible Man. But as a result of really poor box office and critical performances, they shelved the idea, but Blumhouse Productions got to keep the movie and they managed to make it a standalone future. Hands down, this is the best thing that could have happened to this movie because as a result of this, not only does The Invisible Man stand on its own without having to resort to pesky little cameos by Dr. Jekyll or whatever, it also manages to become a completely self-sufficient, self-sustaining piece of work and also, incidentally, one of the best horror movies I've seen this year. But identifying it as just a horror movie would be doing this movie a little bit of a disservice because at its heart The Invisible Man is more of a heavy psychological thriller with many horror elements blended in than a straight up horror movie. Because you know when I say horror you think jump scares and this is definitely not what this movie is about. The movie was written and directed by Lee Whannell whose previous directorial credits include only Insidious Chapter 3 and Upgrade, the second of which was also supposed to have been a part of this dark universe. The Invisible Man is a story of one Cecilia Cass, played to absolutely painful to watch incredible heights by the incredibly talented Elizabeth Moss. In fact, everything that you need to know about Cecilia's story is presented to you right away with the opening scene without any preamble whatsoever. You see the movie opens up on Cecilia sort of waking up in the middle of the night in a giant ass house that just screams I am filthy rich next to a man that she appears to be extremely scared of. In the very next moment we learn that she actually mixed in Valium with his drink so that he will sleep longer and then she executes what by all means appears to be an extremely carefully planned out escape plan and manages to get out of the house. She jumps the high walls that surround this giant ass mansion on a cliff somewhere, makes her way down the woods and waits for her sister to come pick her up. But just as she does, Adrian Griffin, played by Oliver Jackson Cohen, comes running to the car screaming and then he punches the passenger side window in. This manages to communicate to you, the audience, a couple of central elements that will be the crux of the story. One, Cecilia is deathly afraid of Adrian to the point where immediately afterwards she is shown to have been too scared to go out of the house that she's staying at because she thinks he might be watching. Two, it relates to you that Adrian is an unhinged, abusive fucking asshole. Three, since in order to escape Keep Cecilia has to disable the alarms of the mansion, she goes down to the basement where Adrian's lab, R&D space, whatever is located, and there's lots of high-tech devices and suits and shit, so you know that Adrian is into technology. Four, the movie actually kicks off when one month after her escape, Cecilia learns that not only has Adrian killed himself, he has also left her a sizable trust. Now, just like it was in the beginning, the movie doesn't actually actually try to conceal from you what the conditions that will be imposed upon Cecilia receiving this money will be. Tom Griffin, played by Michael Dorman, Adrian's brother, tells Cecilia that her receiving this trust is contingent upon two things. One, she must not commit a crime. Two, she must 
be mentally sound. Yeah, you kind of see where that is going. And immediately after she signs off on this, an invisible presence begins stalking and haunting Cecilia. I'm not gonna elaborate on the nature of The Invisible Man because one, it's a movie literally titled The Invisible Man, so you know there's going to be an invisible man in it. And secondly, since the concept of this trust is introduced right after the concept of an extremely controlling, abusive boyfriend slash fiance slash husband is introduced, you kind of know where this is going to head and you know that Cecilia is not going to enjoy it too much. Now therein lies the genius of this movie. Therein lies the very reason why I think The Invisible Man is an incredibly good movie. It doesn't try to subvert your expectations, it confirms all your expectations, but in ways that you do not expect and to extents that you do not guess at First. I've been reading that people have been finding it very difficult to actually watch this movie, especially people who suffer from PTSD after being able to get out of abusive relationships. And watching this, I can see why. The central theme of The Invisible Man seems to be abuse and the effects of abuse, effects of abusive relationships to be exact. At its heart, the invisible man isn't a literal invisible man harassing Cecilia. It is more the spirit of the abuse that Aiden has laid on her over the course of their relationship that just won't leave her be. Let me try to exemplify that with the first scene where the invisible man actually shows up. See, by the time that this trust comes into play, Cecilia has actually taken shelter in the house of a cop friend of hers, James Larnier, played by the incredibly nice Aldris Hodge. And the Invisible Man doesn't show up when she's alone in the house. It actually shows up when there is two more people in the house with her. And from the onset, it becomes clear that this is aiming to drive Cecilia up the wall and rob her of the trust that has been laid on her. But there's a little bit more than that under the surface, which is where the movie becomes kind of painful to watch. To Elizabeth Moss's absolute credit, she delivers a masterful performance as the post-traumatic, stress-laden, abuse survivor Cecilia. There are several points in the movie where she more elaborates on what kind of abuse that she has been subjected to. And if you have ever been in an abusive relationship, you are going to have a really difficult time watching it because you are going to be able to relate. The abuse that has been visited upon her being revealed as having been psychological, having been mental, having been verbal, having been physical, isn't actually a big revelation. Like I said, the opening scene and the way Elizabeth Moss plays it pretty much tells you all of that. And with the invisible man's presence around her constantly creating this impression that Adrian is still with her every second of the day at the very least in spirit doesn't really help things. And because of that, the narrative of the movie sort of manages to zoom out of just what Cecilia is feeling or thinking and becomes more of an exploration of what happens after you remove yourself from an abusive relationship, what kind of trauma stays with you? I mean, on that point, it is a very tense and very painful movie, I can tell you that for free. However, if we were to abandon this part of the narrative for just a moment, I would say that the one feeling that this movie absolutely thrives on, builds its atmospheres on, and builds its entire story on, is paranoia. And in that regard, the cinematography in this movie is extremely well done and it manages to create this air of constant suspicion and rampant paranoia extremely well. For one thing, The Invisible Man is a surprisingly well-lit kind of movie. Apparently this was because the director Lee Wanell decided that an invisible man would not actually need to hide in the shadows, so keeping everywhere as well-lit as possible kind of creates this interesting effect where you can see everything, but as a result of that, 
that you are absolutely convinced that there is something there that you are not seeing. You are treated to lots of wide shots with Cecilia in the center where there is ample space around her and immediately as a viewer you start trying to discern where the invisible man might be standing on any given shot. Yes there are scenes that actually take place during the night and as such are kind of dark but I would say easily more than half this movie take place in incredibly well lit places. And it is because of that that you feel so apprehensive towards what might be lurking there. Because the movie creates this air of, well, now you see everything, but do you? The actual encounters with the Invisible Man are also done really well in that they are done with as little CGI as possible and it shows. Furthermore, the way that the story develops allows for Adrian in spirit to be in almost every single frame of this movie. So in a regard, it isn't that Cecilia is haunted by her experiences with Aiden, you as the audience are seeing him in every single frame. Another very good aspect of the movie is that Adrian isn't actually shown all that much at the beginning of the movie. You barely see his face. When he catches up to the car, his face isn't really visible. So Adrian is presented as more of an idea than an actual person. As a result of this, the sort of zoomed out kind of meta type narrative that I was talking about takes on a different spirit throughout the movie because even though he is not really in it, he is in it. The movie manages to put you in the headspace of Cecilia by inserting Adrian's presence into every single scene. This is something that you will see in some other movies. For instance, the original Nightmare on Elm Street did this, even though Freddy had very little screen time, you could actually feel his presence. And as such, the title The Invisible Man takes on an entirely new meaning when you are feeling this abusive asshole's touch in everything that Cecilia does, says, everywhere she goes and everyone she interacts with. Another thing that the movie manages to do narrative-wise is to deliver you not only the perspective of the victim, Cecilia, but also the perspective of bystanders. In that the movie makes it abundantly clear that what she is experiencing and what they are witnessing are two different things. In order to achieve this, the movie spends ample time delving into Cecilia's traumas, what she has experienced, experience, why she's as afraid of Adrian as she is, and her encounters with the Invisible Man, but then it also spends time going over other characters' reactions to what is going on. As a result of this, there really aren't any moments when characters, as is the custom it seems in horror movies, act like complete fucking jackass idiots just for the sake of furthering the plot. Now, that is one thing that I absolutely loathe about the way horror movies are written, in that some characters seem to behave in blatantly idiotic ways just so some conflict can happen or the plot can move forward. And oftentimes, there really isn't a reason for any given character to be acting the way that they are, which is what the Invisible Man manages to avoid. But of course, all that could have easily ended up a rather navel gaze worthy exercise if the movie didn't deliver you some cool invisible man action and boy does it deliver. But the twist here is that the movie doesn't really deliver this action in a way that you might be expecting. There are several scenes in which you are fully tensed up expecting a jump scare or for something to come flying off the shelf but that doesn't happen and then there are scenes when you are sure that she has gotten away scot-free and the Invisible Man takes an active role again. I mean, there are a couple of wonky little scenes here and there. The fight choreography isn't always on point. But then again, you can chuck that all up to the absolute panic that the character is suffering when there is literally something that she cannot see on top of her. So if you are in any way a horror fan, a thriller fan, someone who likes their movies psychologically heavy, their characters and protagonists, 
and it's broken. Their story is full of twists and turns. The Invisible Man is definitely for you. That is not to say that if you are afraid of horror movies or if you cannot watch them because you then cannot sleep at night, you shouldn't see it. I didn't say that. In fact, I would recommend that you watch this movie as sort of a gateway into what horror can be for you. I mean, it's a well-written, well-paced, incredibly well-acted, well-scored story with incredible cinematography, great visuals, creates a lot of tension, is extremely gripping and captivating. Like, what more can you ask for in a movie? So if you are going to watch a movie this weekend, let it be The Invisible Man. So until next time, hope you have a wonderful weekend. It's Eason. Peace out.